All right. Well, hello. This is uh, I'm David Lieberstein, the Dream Product Guru, and I'm here to talk to you about licensing. Uh, a lot of inventors have uh, great ideas and uh, would like to uh, find the perfect manufacturer to license your uh, product and uh, sit back and make a ton of money. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, the pros and cons of that. And uh, let me first tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I've had my own companies for a number of years uh, in the housewares and gift industry. Uh, my first company was back in the early 1970s when I was 17. I uh, had a, a greeting card company for 10 years and actually was involved in quite a bit of licensing, uh, both for photographers to use and artists to use on our greeting cards, but also two of our artists, uh, we ended up um, becoming the licensing agent for those artists and did tens of millions of dollars in licensed goods in the States and over in Japan with little cute little animals and children. And then my last company I had for 25 years was called Wine Things Unlimited, uh, wine accessories of bottle stoppers and glassware and ceramics. And I worked with both the uh, artists for designs, but also did a lot of licensing with, uh, for the designs to put on our three-dimensional sculptures and uh, of stoppers and glassware with collegiate. So I had all the major colleges and we did Betty Boop, uh, Star Trek, Cirque du Soleil, Looney Tunes, uh, so we did a lot of licensing. So I had a lot of experience on both sides of the fence. About five years ago, I became a consultant to work with inventors to both help them <clears throat> uh, launch their own companies to move into the whole pre-production phase, find sourcing, and, uh, and go through the whole steps of starting a business, and also work with uh, inventors to help consult them to take those next steps to find the right uh, manufacturer to license their products. And as a matter of fact, I had a, a couple of, of clients in the last couple of years uh, to help them uh, license their, their inventions to, uh, to various companies and, and got to experience the, uh, the pros and the cons and the pitfalls of all that's entailed in doing so. So the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, so you have a great invention and you want to license it rather than spending the time and money to do it yourself. Well, first of all, you need to have a great idea that has a unique niche and is differentiated from everything else out there in your product category. So it's important you do some research of your marketplace to look at what else is out there that does what your product does, what your invention does, uh, and really determine how unique it is. Often inventors will take that next step and see if they can patent their idea and their invention. And there's lots of good attorneys out there. And you can also file for a uh, um, non-provisional, uh, I mean, pro provisional patent, which gives you a year to figure out how viable it is. And you can do that yourself for like 160 bucks and go online and find some places to do that. Or you can hire an attorney for two to five grand to do it for you. Uh, and again, you don't want to waste your time and money on a patent if there's a lot of things out there similar. So do the research online. Secondly, you need to determine who is the appropriate company that your invention will sell with their company, with their product line. So again, uh, you do research in your field to find out who are the largest companies and the smallest companies that have products that your invention will complement because nobody's going to pick up your product and put it in their product line if it doesn't complement what they're already doing and offer their customers something unique that they don't currently have so it's got to add value to their co company and to their product line so let's say you find a half a dozen companies that you feel that your invention your product would be a great fit for them you need to then do some research, probably by calling the company or emailing them to see, do they have a licensing program in place? And if so, what is the procedure for you to uh, propose your invention to them? Because the worst thing that could happen is that you send off a picture of your invention and the idea to a company that does not do any licensing. And you've just given away your idea. Whether you have a provisional patent or not, companies that are unscrupulous, and there's plenty of them, unfortunately, that are out there, 
will take your idea, work around the patent if they need to, and get it out there way before you'll ever have a chance to license it or produce it yourself. So it's important to keep your ideas close into the chest, as they say, and just be smart about it. Some companies will be willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, that says that if they don't have anything similar in the works, they're not gonna knock you off. That gives you a little bit of additional uh, protection, but again, some an unscrupulous company will do, it, do whatever they want to take the idea. So I don't want you to be fearful of your idea being stolen, but I want you to be smart about it. And that means do your homework, to make sure the company has a licensing program in place to work with inventors and find out who you submit that idea to and what the procedure is. And do not send your idea or talk about your idea to anybody in any company where they don't have a proper program in place, okay? So that's, uh, those are the two main portions. Then, um, so you've determined the, the proper company that is complementary to your product where your product uh, invention will add value to their company. You've determined if they have a licensing program and how to submit your idea, and then you submit it. Now I've talked with clients where they say, David, I submitted it to them and they never got back to me or I called and they just didn't return my calls. What do I do? You have to be patient. And you have to realize that the licensing, the new product uh, development uh, uh, vice president or person that's in charge of looking for new products and reviewing license, potential uh, inventions to license, they have a lot on their plate. That's not all they do. They have new products that they're developing that all across the board. They're usually working 12 to 18 months ahead of time. So they're very busy people. And as, as important as your product and invention is, of course, to you, and it may be to them as well, Pardon me, that, uh, you know, um, they don't always get back to us on a quick, uh, you know, quickly. So be patient. Uh, don't bug them too often, but it's also appropriate to send an email or a voicemail every week or two. If you don't hear back from them in a month or six weeks and you've done three or four follow-up calls or emails to say, hey, did you get my idea? What do you think? They don't get back to you. They're not interested. You need to let it go and move on. Okay. Now, the next thing to know is what is your invention worth to a company and what will they pay? Now, the standard royalty rate these days for inventions, particularly for a product that's not have, does not have a proven track record that you've had it out there and you can show them sales and it's already been in the stores. Assuming that you're an inventor, you've got a great idea, you may have a provisional patent on it. They don't know if it's gonna, the company doesn't know if it's, it's gonna sell or not. And they're gonna have to put a lot of time and money to develop it and produce it and market it. So most companies these days are only willing to pay a 3% royalty on total revenue, total sales that they make whether it's retail or wholesale. That means that your idea needs to be a big hit. And like anything, you know, uh, the 80-20, the you know, very few uh, ideas or products are a big enough hit to where you're going to make a lot of money. So, for example, if the product does really well the first year and they do a million dollars of sales, your 3% royalty is worth $30,000 to you which is nice money, but you can't really live on that for most folks. So a lot of uh, very creative inventors will have a number of ideas they're developing all year long. And they may have a half a dozen or a dozen licenses going with different inventions with different companies. Some don't do well, some do really well, and they make a living that way. So just know going into it that, you know, as much as you'd like to get an advanced royalty of, Ten or twenty-five thousand dollars, and hope that you're going to make fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year. That product has to do really, really well. There are some inventors that have done great, and their products do five or ten million dollars a year, and the company takes it, you know, and does the the, the, the TV commercials and the online and gets into the retail stores and as on TV and all that kind of thing. And the ones that do great, those guys make a ton of money but just have 
appropriate realistic expectations, you're not going to know until it gets out there. So the next step is that let's say the company is interested in, in your idea and they want to discuss a licensing deal. If you don't have any experience negotiating a licensing deal, do research online. I'm going to post something online after our talk here today. They'll give you some overviews uh, as I'm talking about, just a recap of what I'm talking about, some other ideas about licensing. But as far as negotiating a contract, if you don't have experience in that, you might want to get an expert to help you, whether it's your license, whether it's your patent attorney or a consultant like myself and other folks that have had the experience of doing that. Because what you'll want to do is you have to, you want to negotiate the royalty rate, of course. You'd like to try to get more than 3% if possible. We would try to get 5% or more, but generally speaking, most companies are not willing to pay more than that. Some will only offer 1% or 1.5% these days. They don't want to take much risk. Uh, we want to try to negotiate to get an advanced royalty. That means you're going to get money up front that goes and applies against future royalties. So the company has some skin in the game with you as well as their developmental costs and tooling and production and marketing costs. That advance, generally speaking, is going to be just good faith money. If you're lucky, you'll get 5000 maybe 10000 sometimes just at what, $1,000 or $2,000, but it's important to get a little money in the game from, the, from your licensee. Secondly, you want to look at uh, annual guarantee. So if possible, we get a three to five year contract and we try to negotiate a conservative number that the, that the licensee feels that they can accomplish and that we feel the product can accomplish with, with realistic expectations. So for example, uh, I had a product I was negotiating for an inventor and with the company doing 50 or 20 million a year, they told me they thought that if the product does well, they would do one to $2 million a year on it. So we developed a staged portion, staged guarantees of starting around 10,000 a year and going up to 25,000 a year by year, by year five. And that, that basically the company, if they sign the contract, they're guaranteeing you that amount of royalty per year based on their projected sales. If they do more sales than that, of course, you're going to get more money than that. But that's, that's how, you know, it, it works. And then generally speaking, you're going to get paid quarterly, sometimes monthly, if the company is doing a lot of volume for you. Uh, and there's reporting details and such, and it's all pretty much in standard licensing agreements that most attorneys will have that's, that are familiar with that industry, with, that, with licensing. So those are the basics. Um, let me listen, I'm gonna check my notes for a second if there's anything else I wanna say about that. Um, yeah, so um, the other thing to consider is uh, I've had a couple of clients where we had a, a, a great idea. They had a great idea. I found the right very large company in the housewares industry for a drying, a retractable drying rack for clothing. And at the end of the day, the, the, the VP of marketing said, you know, we love your product. It fits within our, our company really well, but you don't have it. It, and it was fully patented, but we, they didn't have a working prototype. They didn't have it fully engineered. They didn't have pro the proper pricing yet from a factory. And the manufacturer said, you know, we don't have the time or the resources to spend on your one product. And they had just acquired three other companies with dozens of products to integrate into their company. And uh, so I went back to the, uh, the, my client and said, you know, I've talked to most of the companies that are in your field at the houseware show and people like the idea, but I don't think it's licensable at this stage. And bottom line is they decided to uh, keep their own destiny in their own hands and they decided to venture themselves. So uh, I helped them find a, a, a factory, a source, and we got the prototype. We, we pre-launched it at the houseware show last year, got some great interest from Home Depot and some other majors had some production issues and delays, had to go to a different factory, and we're now looking to relaunch it next March at the Houseware Show. And one of the key clients is still interested. So, uh, you know, doing it yourself is, of course, you have a much greater potential of making a lot more money in a lot shorter time, and also not making a lot of money if the product doesn't do well. You have that 
risk of your own money and friends and family in there of capital and a lot of time and a lead time of anywhere from uh, six to 12 months up to two years or more to actually launch the product into the marketplace, depending on how easy or difficult it is to uh, engineer the product, how much tooling is involved, how much money will it cost to get the tooling made and the minimum runs of the minimum order to produce it in the factory, usually overseas, sometimes domestically, and uh, your time and availability to set up a business and do all the marketing. And, you know, we have some great resources here with the, you know, with, with Tracy at, at the, at, you know, productlaunchhazard.com. Um, I'm, of course, an expert on licensing and also on the whole portion of, of looking at the venture yourself, of helping you sort of handhold every week, uh, you know, talking to you and helping you focus in on what needs to be done next for uh, product design and sourcing and working with the factory and getting all the details set up for business and marketing. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of other great consultants uh, within the product launch companies that can help you as well. And other people, of course, you can find online. So it's important to get a good team behind you. Uh, know what your risk aversion is if you want to do it yourself. And, um, you know, people think you need hundreds of thousands of dollars to launch a company. And not quite often, that's not the case. If it's a simple product, maybe the tooling is only $5,000 or $25,000. And the production run may be five or $10,000 up to 40,000, but it's still not a huge amount of money. You've got your website to do, you've got consultants, you've you got other things, to uh, trade shows and such, but uh, I've seen a number of companies launch for, you know, under a hundred thousand and quite often under 50,000. So that may be a, a big number for a lot of you and other folks go, well, gosh, maybe that makes more sense. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll be posting online a, a little later in the next couple of days, some ideas about this. And there's lots of other resources on our website from um, other uh, you know, providers and, 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 and presenters to give you ideas. And um, so I'm going to wrap up now. I think I've said everything I have to say for today. Uh, you can contact me, uh, look up my name on, on, on the Product Launch Hazards website, and you can drop me an email. Um, I'm happy to uh, uh, have set up an uh, initial 30-minute uh, uh, introductory consultation to talk about what you're doing and uh, how I can maybe support you in that uh, or give you other resources to look towards. And um, I appreciate your spending the time listening and I hope that I was of help to you. So I'm David Lieberstein, the Dream Product Guru, signing off for today. Thank you so much.